Okay, vegetable curry, ingredients. Right, where do we start? Right, let's start at the front. Um, we've got half an onion, finely chopped. The other half is over here, only uh, more broadly chopped. Um, and we've got four cloves of garlic. Uh, we've got some uh, ginger. Uh, that's about one and a half ice cubes, maybe two ice cubes. We've got half a cup of peas, half a cup of um, uh, sweet corn. These are both frozen, no problems there. We've got one uh, tomato, which is cut into quarters. We've got um, a, a, a fairly large green uh, chilli, hot pepper. Uh, that's cut up uh, into fairly large chunks, about one centimetre chunks, half inch chunks. And we've got uh, a fairly large carrot uh, cut into pieces rather like that. Okay, um, veg prep, uh, look on my channel, there's plenty of, uh, plenty of videos on vegetable preparation. Uh, we've also got, um, that's just a, a medium sized potato which I've just chopped up again into fairly small pieces. I want everything to cook fairly quickly because I don't believe in hanging about. And the other half of the onions here cut as I told you before and there's a whole red pepper uh, that's there for flavour and colour and that's just chopped again into about one inch two centimetre pieces and the bulk of the, this um, vegetable curry will be white cabbage uh, and again you know I've just chopped that broadly um, so that um, that will look nice in the dish in the final dish. The other two, two items I've got well apart from the cooking oil is uh, some panch poran. Panch poran you can buy, buy these these are the um, these are the spices the whole spices with which I sweeten the fat to start with so that's called uh, panch poran. I made this one myself but you can buy panch pour around in most supermarkets. Um, curry powder, you need a medium madras for this unless you're making your own like I do. Um, there is a video for making your own uh, curry powder. Um, I, I just make all my own. Okay so the next thing you'll see is me starting to cook. Okay, I think it's coming up to heat, yep. Um, what I'm going to use in this case, I'm going to use a bit of uh, groundnut oil. A couple of reasons, groundnut oil has a really nice high flash point so it doesn't burn. And there is a process in this where I like to get the oil hot and put in some of that panch pran, the whole spices. Okay, the oil's coming up to heat. Um, another additional thing I found in my freezer was some curry leaves. So I've got a little pinch of curry leaves and you'll see why in a minute. They offer some brilliant flavour. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is get hold of a little bit of my panch pran, about that much, and that goes into my fat. And when that starts to pop, in goes the curry leaves. Oh, that smells awesome. And on top of that goes the onion and I fry the onion for a couple of minutes in the hot fat. Now you'll notice that fat is very hot and the strike heat was quite high. Alright, so your panch pran goes in, if it drops into the hot fat it starts to pop straight away. In go your curry leaves if you've got them. You don't have to have them but they, they do add a delicious flavour. Um, and then we fry this onion for a minute, keep that going. Now your nose will tell you. Keep that going. Okay, I'm starting to smell a little bit of caramelisation now. Because this is very hot fat, very hot peanut oil, groundnut oil. The Chinese like to use this, especially in Cantonese cuisine, they use their groundnut oil for, um, for stir-frying for the same reason, it's got such a high flash point. Uh, okay, so, lovely. The next thing in is the large peppers and the onion. And there's good reason for that, and that's because, again, they're these are items that don't necessarily burn and when they do burn even slightly 
um, it only adds more flavour to the dish. Um, there's a very popular Italian dish which, which uh, uses um, onions and peppers in this way and <laughs> trust me it's gorgeous, we'll have to do that one day. Um, so, superb. So we keep that going for a bit. Oops, didn't put the ginger in, ginger's got to go in. Don't forget the ginger, never forget the ginger. Ginger's one of those really beautiful health giving uh, vegetables, it's just fabulous. Uh, it's, a, it's I think, I believe it's a rhizome, it, uh, it grows underground, it has uh, uh, it forms a leafy plant above the surface but below the surface it's like these nodules, you know, like ginger. And there are quite a few um, vegetables in that group, you know, there's ginseng, there's turmeric, there's the lady's fingers, uh, sorry I'm not sure they're called lady's fingers but they're, they're, it's like a Thai a vegetable, I can't remember the name of it just now, and it looks like, uh, like fingers. Um, and they're, they're all wonderful, uh, have wonderful health giving properties. Ginger is particularly good for your digestive, um, and uh, another one is galangal. Uh, the difference between ginger and galangal is ginger is what, what in Thai uh, cuisine they would probably call something that's heating, and uh, galangal is cooling. Um, but they're two distinct flavours and uh, in Thai food you, you, you don't really see an awful lot of ginger unless they're emulating Indian or uh, Chinese food. Ginger is used also extensively in uh, the, the cooking of the Caribbean. which I love Caribbean food, it's like amazing. It's, to me it's one of the world's great undiscovered cuisines. Um, I know Indian food has been done to death, but it's so lush that everybody wants it. <laughs> All right. I'm going to let those cook for a few more minutes, then I'll get back to you. Okay, that's now coming up to the heat I want it. And this is the time when we're adding our curry powder. So I want one, two heat teaspoons of curry powder in that one. Use your favourite curry powder or make your own. And then what we do now is we stir that in and we let that cook around for a minute. Oh, that smells, that smells so fabulous. It looks like a dirty mess, but it smells fabulous, I tell you. <laughs> uh. I know I keep saying this, keep hammering it home, but I never ever get sick of that. That is so good. I'm just going to carry on stirring that. Don't forget we've got a really hot heat on this. What I'm going to do at this point, I've got about 300 uh, millilitres of vegetable stock. So I'm just going to add a little bit of that, a little splash of that. That shows you how hot the pan was. And then just shush it around a bit, like that. And what you're trying to do is deglaze the bottom. And that stops everything burning. Now, at this stage, this is very important. What we do is we've got it to this stage now where we've fried some of the rawness out of the, out of the uh, spices. We've softened up the vegetables to the point of caramelization. And now we've added a bit of stock, just a splash to deglaze the pan. And then what we're going to do is we're going to keep stirring it over high heat and watch what's happening. That's starting now to evaporate and fry again and probably steaming up the place as well. Okay, there you go. When it gets back down to the point of frying and it's starting to stick to the pan again, then we can add a bit more. Right. Why do we do this? Right. Everybody will agree that if you warm up a stew or a curry, it tastes better the second day. Well, this is a little sneaking chef trick on how to get second day curry on day one. Because what you're effectively doing is you're dehydrating it and then rehydrating it again. 
and that gives you day two flavour in your curry. So there you go, there's a sneaky little trick you didn't learn elsewhere. Right, uh, what I'm going to do now is just chuck in all the rest of the veg. Lazy cut way. Uh, the only thing I'm going to leave out at this moment is the tomato itself. Just the tomato. Leave that out and get the carrot in. In goes the carrot and in goes the chilies. Oops. See that bit of tomato trying to escape there? The egg. Right. So that's now in there. Doesn't that look colourful? Isn't that lovely? Look at that. Oh, food should be like this. This is what food should be like. It should be a celebration of joy and light. Isn't it? How lovely. Right. There we go. And let's get the cabbage on top like that. And you're thinking, oh no, he's got too much in the pan. Well, he hasn't got too much in the pan because he's going to pour on the rest of that stock now, put the lid on, and like the lazy cook he is, he's going to walk away for five minutes. See you in five. Okay, back to the uh, vegetable curry, the sabzi. Um, that's reduced a little bit, the cabbage has gone down, and a bit of pressure on it means it goes down even further. I think what we need to do now, very simple job, is turn down the heat to about two thirds. It was on six, it's now on four, and we'll cover it again and just let that go for a bit. Okay, we're back, check in, 10 minutes later. All right, that's coming up nicely. Let's get Spoonzilla into it and let's have a look. Let's push it down a bit. Okay, that's reducing quite a lot in liquid. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab a kettle, just top it up slightly, that's it, put the lid on and turn it down to two. So it's gone from six to four and now from four to two and that was about ten minutes. One thing I will do now is I'll put the tomatoes on top, just put them on top like that and cover that up and what we'll do is we'll leave it like that covered until it's ready okay here we are we've got uh, vegetable curry we've got uh, in the center we've got the uh, chicken yogurt chicken and we've got saffron rice and on the side we've got a nice cucumber and mint writer all these dishes are available on my channel and um, enjoy <laughs> 